Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the second part of the exceptional story for Daylight. In the last episode we went to a bar, found out the history of this man's love interest and we are on our way to the island called Daylight. The grieving sailor starts untying the boat from the dock. Let's get going then. The precocious rattling hops up onto a chair in the cabin, ready to give directions and the sailor undocks the fishing boat. You head out to Z. Z is smooth and quiet under the chugging of the Zayla's fishing vessel. The false stars on the ceiling drift by above you. Daylight is far across the undersea. Travel will take some time. The journey is quiet and calm, apart from the excited chattering of the precocious rattling. The grieving Zayla pilots the fishing ship with determination. Gradually, a glow appears on the distant horizon. The ship rocks gently under your feet. The grieving sailor pilots you steadily onward. In the distance, the horizon glows with a warm light. You head towards the light on the horizon. There it is, calls the rattling. The grieving sailor adjusts course and steers you towards the island. As you get closer, the light surrounds the ship. The ambient glow grows increasingly bright. The glare fills every crevice of the ship. You shade your eyes with your hand to no avail. You close your eyes, but your eyelids cannot keep out the blaze. You peek through your fingers, squinting, trying to let your vision adjust. As you are peering through the radiance, you feel the th soft thud of the hull running aground on sand. Oh, if we just crash the ship? The griefing sailor's fishing boat is moored on the shoreline, on the island of daylight. Okay, so we have a few options here. We can either explore the island, there's nothing of interest on the boat, take the precocious rattling with you, she may be able to help you navigate the island, ask the grieving sailor to come with you, he may be a valuable companion while exploring the surface, and tell the grieving sailor to haul anchor. We don't want to leave just yet, it seems a little weird to just turn her up, we're going home now. I mean I kind of, I, I like the rattling. I kind of imagine it sits on the shoulder, but so we'll start here. The precocious rattling is eager to show you all her favourite parts of the island. She seems to have forgotten about the monster that drove her family away. The precocious rattling is joining you exploring the surface of daylight. Can I ask them both? <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> A grim companion. The sailor glances re reluctantly out of the cabin at the island, but nods in quiet acquiescence. Okay, let's explore the island. A blinding place. You wade ashore into the impenetrable white haze of the island. You make out model houses in the glare and pathways leading you between them. On daylight. You are blinded by searing daylight. It is everywhere. Your vision becomes a radiant white haze. The grieving sailor swears and covers his eyes. Squinting through the glare, you make out tiny buildings dotted across the island, as well as miniature rows, trees and figures to match. The precocious rattling quivers in excitement, apparently not bothered by the light and eager to explore the island with you. You spy a workshop nestled high in distant cliffs. You he your head aches from the glare of the island. Nothing on the island moves. Ooh, we have... A few options here, we can either blunder forward, you have other senses, surely you can find something of value with your hands and ears, an image of us crawling around on the floor trying to find anything. We don't need to return to shore yet and visit the old mill. You spy a model windmill in a field, the veins sag slightly with mould, but they do turn when pushed. A 60% chance, let's, let's try it. Goat's eye. The windmill is surrounded by little model goats, all standing idly, staring into the middle distance with their eyes painted in uncomfortable detail. The fields seem to go on forever in the bright. The landmarks you were following disappear in the glare. In the distance you see a figure in the glare. It recedes into searing radiance. The smell of glue from the grass makes you gag and cough. Your throat tastes like razors. We were unlucky. Damn. Let's, I guess we'll visit the... We're just going to be visiting various different locations around daylight, apparently. We can either visit the little church, 
The bell tower and steeple of the church is tall and elaborate, and an easy point to navigate yourself by when you can spot it. And then the, the tiny terraces. You discover the central terraces of the town. The miniature houses all in a row, creating a knee-high wall to which your shins keep returning. Let's visit the church. The church is surrounded by little gravestones and conifers like paintbrushes. The little church. The church stands tall and proud in the centre of the graveyard. Its stonework and roof slates have been rendered with the finest of care. The harsh light through the little church's delicate stained glass casts a dappled rainbow inside the chapel. Toward the back of the chapel there is a small crank handle emerging from the wall. We have a few choices here. Say a small prayer. The blinding radiance of daylight seems an unusually appropriate place to say a small prayer to that which is greater than oneself. Do we need for that? Not having dullness. <laughs> Listen to a hymn. Inside the chapel, there is a little pipe organ, resting and ready to intone a song of praise for you. Hey, I am. I want to listen to a hymn. A bright song. You wind the little crank at the back of the chapel until the spring inside will turn no more. When you release it, the pipe organ inside begins a rendition of all things bright and beautiful in pan-piped tones. The song does not last long, and in the blasting light the harmony of the pipes seems out of place, but it is beautiful on its own merits. A spark of inspiration. Oh, I guess we'll say a small prayer. What you say is between you and that to which you offered your prayers. You feel better for it, however. We can remove. We can remove the music box if we had rusty tools. That seems a little harsh, but we will, we will leave. Return to other thing. You trapeze your way through the graveyard and back out into the lane. Behind you, the little bell rings again in the wind. After a time, you start to wonder if the light is simply darkness that your eyes has mistaken in a moment of Z-madness. Uh, let's... Oh, we can explore the cove. The village has a dock set up in the cove, on the side of the island. Getting there involves some scrambling over rocks, or we can explore the tiny terraces from earlier. Let's explore the cove. Into the cove. You inch along a rock face past a model church. The plaster vicar watching disapprovingly with glazed eyes, and you pick your way along the stones into the cove. An argument in the minit miniature street is frozen forever in time by the stillness of plaster. This is a very bizarre place. The docks of daylight are nestled into a cove on the side of the island. The light here reflects off the surface of the water, but the rocky cliffs surrounding give some measure of relief. Several ships have been abandoned here. Most have since foundered on hidden rocks below the surface. So we have a few options. Search the docks and piers. The wooden piers and walkways are covered in cargo crates and loading gear. This should be checking my watchful, but I have a 100% chance of success because I probably have a ridiculously high watchful. Working parts. You climb out onto the wooden scaffolding and pick your way through supply lockers storage crates and piles of discarded equipment. Most of what you find is either seized or broken, but some of the gear is in working condition. So we found the rusty tools. So we go back to the church and steal the music box and some never cold brass. Let's try searching the wrecked boats. The grieving Zayla points out a couple of vessels that look ripe for scavenging. Now this is using my shadowy skill, which is one of my lesser used skills but uh, so 96 percent chance it's a good chance an expert on maritime expeditions the grieving sailor helps you make your way onto some of the boats wrecked close to the dock he points out a dangerous footing and lets you know where to find the cargo supplies his instructions are good and you find some valuables in amongst the abandoned personal effects in one cabin you find sketches of various town layouts. They all feature central lakes surrounded by serpentine roads and pathways branching to fill out space outwards. Ooh, we've got quite a lot of interesting things here. We've got five fistfuls of surface, surface currency, two bottles of moral ways, a spark of inspiration and two cryptic clues. 
uh, make our way through the... We could either do that again, and I guess we'd get the same rewards again. So if I was after the particular reward here, I could I could do it a few times. And get it again. But for the sake of not wanting to watch me grind things, I'm just going to carry on. <laughs> so we will make our way through the cove. The walkways and scaffolding mark a path to a clear exit on the far side of the cove. You pick your way along the docks and scaffolds. The boats below creak on their rocky perches. At the far side of the cove, you find the path up to the surface. It is well trodden and littered with debris from dropped cargo. We found a coast map, apparently. Or well, we did it ourselves. <laughs> oh no, we can't go back to the church because it's rolling a random dice, giving me random things. But we have a new, a new place to go. We get to visit the Muddle Castle. You find a model castle atop a hill. It is constructed from individual handcrafted stones. Many are scattered across the field in imitation ruin. An historical scene. The castle stands at the top of a little hill. Although it lies in mock ruin, the parts of it that stand are adorned with decoration and tapestries. Around it there are colorful stalls and figures in medieval garb. Two miniature knights in armor are mounted on model horses, ready to joust. From here, you can look out over the island. If it weren't for the glare, you could see most of it. And most of it could see you. Ooh, that's a little... A little bit of a foreshadowing there. You're starting to get your bearings. Ooh, we can visit the Lake District. You stumbled across several model lakes set into the ground. Tiny boats in plaster fishermen line the shores of the imitation pools. Once you start to get your bearings, you figure out that the Lake District is actually the centerpiece of the entire model village. The paths seem to channel you towards their mirrored surface. Little boats and a model sea monster populate the lakes, but they leave plenty of open water. In the light, gazing into one's own reflection provides some moment of relief. Oh, the, we can visit the old mill again, but no, we will go to the Handmade Forest. In the distance, you see a model forest. The canopy of oaks and willows have been assembled leaf by handcrafted leaf. Oh, can you imagine making a forest by hand? The Handmade Forest covers a vast swathe of, of the island. Moving among the trees is tricky as they cluster around your waist and push against you. But you can muscle your way through. These are quite high trees then if they're going up to the waist. The scale of this island is crazy. I like it. <laughs> the Handmade Forest. The leaves of the great oaks and willows are silvery in the slight breeze. The tallest among them reach right up to your chest. So we can do a few things here. We can rest in the fairy glade? A small clearing among the trees is edged by a ring of tiny clay mushrooms. Sitting in it brings one's eyeline below the canopy. I mean, we should... <laughs> Let's try it. Sitting in the glade pleasantly shields you from the vastness of daylight's radiance. It is still painfully bright here, but at least it doesn't go very far. The precocious rattling beams up at you. You're like a huge bear! She laughed for a moment, and then begins to host a mimed tea party. I like this rat quite a lot. Search for the castle in the trees. The precocious rattling excitedly tugs on the hems to lead you through the forest. Okay. Mr. Sock's Royal Residence. I was very interested in finding Mr. Sock's. <laughs> The tree mansion sprawls between the boroughs of a half dozen waist-high oaks. The precocious rattling guides you to a large central hall and points to it excitedly. He's in there! The roof of the hall opens on brass hinges, and inside is furnished with lavish model chairs and tables. Among it rests a green sock, plumply stuffed with other socks like a well-fed cannibal and staring up at you with lifeless amber bead eyes. 
the precocious rattling cheers as you lift him out and reaches out to embrace her friend as you pass him down to her. We found Mr. Sock. A miniature farmhouse stands in a field. The plaster farmer has fallen over holding a pitchfork and makes no move to stand. Uh, shall we try and make our way through the forest? It is difficult to find significant landmarks among the trees. Notes botanical. You make notes of any clearings and glades you find. A wizened elm stands out among willows. You step over a circular brook with no source or destination. When you make your way out of the woods, you have a well annot annotated map of your route through. We now have a forest map, so we have a coast map and a forest map. We are slowly just putting it all putting it all together, trying to feel our way around this, this island. Ooh, we can visit a model railway station. You follow model railway tracks until you reach the station. The tracks only make a short circuit around town, but the station seems very fancy. The mighty steam engine. The model railway tracks that trace the aisle all lead to just one station. At the train station, there are dozens of frozen little figures attending the business of travel. Porters hurry luggage across the platform, lovers hold each other in goodbye's embrace. Engineers stoke the boiler of the engine in preparation for a journey. The station building itself has a coin slot on the top. We can steal the engine! Oh no! This is going to be one of those choices that I'm going to regret. We can either start the train, the train is coin operated by a slot on top of the station. This will make us leave the station, I don't know where it will take us. Or we can extract the steam engine from the train. The engine looks simple to remove, so long as it's cool enough to handle. What would I even do with the steam engine? Okay, I'm going to take the engine. Danger of explosion? Well, that escalated quickly. You manage to unbolt the fastenings holding the boiler and engine in place. As you remove the engine from the locomotive, you spot a warning on the boiler. Do not leave on high burn. Danger of explosion. <laughs> you leave the model train station to search further through the glare. Hmm, we, I need to get back to the church, I believe. Let's blunder forward. Model village behaviour. The surface of the island is covered with miniature houses, farms and halls. Tiny sheep stand idly in fields of green velvet. As you blunder through the bleached miniature landscape, you crush an innocent plaster villager underfoot. Oh, that's not nice. After a time, you start to wonder if the light is simply darkness. Uh, we've read that. You start to gain your bearings. You are being hunted. Hunted by what? I guess the monster. Oh dear. You are blinded by searing daylight. It is everywhere. Your vision becomes a radiant white haze. The grieving Zayla swears and covers his eyes. So we need to flee from the pursuer. It is hunting you. No escape. You run, hands outstretched through the miniature streets and fields of daylight. You stumble forever over tiny homes before tripping on a hedgerow and falling to your knees. When you look up into the glare, a face of sorts looms before you. The face of the stalker. The creature looms over you. Its face is lumpen and grey, like wet clay. Bone antlers drift gently in the air around it. Its slit eyes fix on you with predatory curiosity. The needle teeth in its jawless maw oscillate hungrily. Okay, so we have a few options here. We can find a way out of this. Given your resources and faculties, there must be something you can do. Or we can punch it. We are quite a dangerous lady, so maybe you can best it. Or we can give it something beautiful. It yearns for the art, the creativity, the romance within you. Maybe if you give it some portion of what it wants, it may spare the rest. Or we can throw Mr. Sock. Mr. Sock catches the creature's eye and holds it. You could give up Mr. Sock for an easy escape. I am going to vote. We're gonna, we're gonna punch it. Or shoot it. Or whatever we have. A strong right hook. Oh yes. 
It was a punch. You swing wildly as the creature drifts past your fists. As you catch your breath, it lurches forward. You deflect it with a solid blow to the head. It reels away. You escape before it can return for another round. Ah, we can go back to visit the church. I want to steal the tiny music box. Is it theft? I'm sure it belongs to somebody. The music box is in the back of the church, fixed in place with screws. You undo the fixtures on the back of the church, remove the miniature pipe organ. You now have one hymnal music box. Okay. What am I missing? I need to go to the tiny terraces. The densest part of the model village is filled with rows and rows of connected houses. The streets are wide enough for you to walk along and populated with miniature plaster people and carriages. Ooh, we have a lot of things to be here. The center of the miniature village is full of tight streets lined with terraced houses and occasionally punctuated by a park or marketplace. So we can ask the precocious rattling about her home. He's gone quiet now. You reach the terraces. She looks across the terraces at one house in particular. You go to open it up, but she stops you. That's my house. That's where my mother's and little brother and me all lived. And I had my birthday there. And all the other rats came and sang. And then some of the neighbors started acting different. And we had to stay away from the Imaginator's workshop. And then we had to leave. We couldn't even go back to my treehouse for Mr. Sock. Thank you for helping me find him. Examine the little plaster street people. The figurines that line the streets are exquisitely detailed. A rainbow of faces. The plaster molding and casting of the figures is lovingly coated with the finest painting. Figures from all over the world seem to have gathered in these Lilypudian streets. You follow the streets to find barbers cutting hair folks communing outside a pub, and lovers strolling hand in hand through a tiny rose garden. Towards the outskirts of town, however, the terrace houses have fewer loving details, and the people become an increasingly similar set of pale-skinned rural figures. Hmm. It kicked me out. <laughs> I was not finished. Let's see if we can find it again. Uh, I miss a plaster. Oh, we killed another villager. Oh, no. Oh, we need to blunder forward again. We are being followed. Here we go, tiny terraces. Uh, we, we can inspect inside the houses. The houses are fully furnished inside and the walls open on hinges. Another spark of inspiration lived-in homes. You swing the front wall of one of the terrace houses open. Inside, the rooms are elaborately decorated. Some are as new, others have clearly been lived in. Searching the less tidy houses turns up a number of tiny artifacts crafted by other hands in the rest of the village. A helmet made from a bottle cap, a blanket knitted from cotton thread, a wooden horse carved from a cork. I'm guessing that's the little rats. And now we can make our way through the terraces. The winding streets and tall terraced houses create a maze of model stones. You take careful notes as you twist and turn through the densely lined streets. Occasionally you step over an especially low wall or rooftop. When you emerge from the other side of the terraced knot, you have a solid understanding of the layout of the streets. Hmm. Still can't get into the cliffside workshop. We need to have exploring daylight. Uh oh, we're being pursued again. Run away. There is no escape. And we have the cliffside workshop. Tucked into the cliffside corner, you find a simple stone building. The only structure on the island, more than three feet tall. 